Alright, hi guys, and welcome back to another video on Bluebeam Review. Right, so today we'll be talking about tool chests. Uh, we won't be creating any new tools, but let's talk about uh, some tips and tricks when you're using tool chests. So, whenever you use tool chests, uh, it's basically a location for you to store your tools. So, it can range from measurements, or it can be symbols, or it can be just uh, like, for example, measurement symbols. And also other things, it can be for counting items and such. So as you go along, you are likely going to create uh, many different uh, tool sets right, to be shared among many people. Right? So uh, some of the tips that you can do is that when you take a look at this My Tools uh, tool set, you will see that there are numbers here. Right? At, at the same time, so for example, if I were to want to use it to uh, take off some concrete items, I have my concrete a uh, concrete tool set over here. So how do I even get to this point? So, right, so this is what you call the detail view. So if you click on this button here, you can actually switch to and fro from the symbol view, which is here, and also to the detail view. So the plus point with the detail view is that you can actually see from a glance uh, what you are trying to actually uh, select because it shows you the subject name and label straight away displayed in a text form. If you actually use it as a symbol, you will have to hover your mouse over the item for you to see what it is. Right? So whichever you're more comfortable with, you can select. Right? The next thing is that, uh, let's say if I'm looking to select uh, a few different items and I'm uh, looking to uh, use the concrete uh, measurements uh, for, to, for, for today. Right? So I will need certain things. Let's say I will need surfacing. What I can do is that I can drag and drop Let's say I need this as well, I can drag and drop. So now that they're over here, I can actually switch back to detail view. They will still retain all this uh, numbering here. Right? So this numbering, they are actually what you call shortcut keys. Right? So for example, if I want to do for resurfacing of type A coating, I can, I can just press the uh, 7 button. So you notice once I press 7, it will be highlighted over here. If I press 8, it will switch down to this one, 6 so on and so forth. Right, so I can select 7, right, and then I can just select the item, select, right, and I can use it. So, so the next thing that you notice is that once I finish measuring one particular item, you notice in this icon here, my crosshair still shows the symbol of the scale ruler. Okay, that also means the software is waiting for me to do a second measurement. Right, so for those who have just started off with their, uh, with their softwares, you will not usually have this option there. Right, usually once you finish one area, that's it. And then you will have to do on to the next one or you either have to click again. Right, so the other tip is that you can actually make use of this function called reuse. So it's under tools and at the bottom here, reuse. So you notice right now it's active. Right, so it's currently active. So the point of having reuse on is that whenever I finish uh, one measurement or one markup, they will assume that I want to use it again. So some simple ways of applying this is that if I want to take, uh, I want to key in a form, right, and I have my address over here. So if I press the six, this is my address. So when I use it, I click once, it will just continually have it over there. So it could be used for uh, multiple instances of a text markup or can be multiple instances of any other type of markup that you have. Right, so those are the two. Now the third is that, now you take a look and you can scroll through all the different uh, two sets that I have, right, and when you click the drop down menu, there are really a lot. Right, so in any case, uh, when you have created many different two, uh, two sets, you may need a system where some of the two sets only turn on when certain um, certain what you call certain settings are active, so it's similar to how um, let's say let's say you log on to your computer, right? Uh, you key in your username and password. Uh, they will naturally remember uh, where your buttons are, where your screensaver is, uh, what is the desktop background that you use, right? So those uh, those are what you call Windows user ID or user accounts. So within Bluebeam, they have something called a profile. Alright, so now within the profile here, you can actually uh, select and control. So you can actually select uh, any one of the default ones here, or you can create your own profile. 
So after you create your own profile, under the two chairs, you can select individually, right? Uh, let's say for example, if I want to uh, actually uh, add on a new uh, tool set, right? You can actually select and tell them whether you want to show in all profiles or do you want that tool set to be active in your current profile. So with that, you can potentially have a certain uh, type of two sets only appear when you're on a certain profile and other two sets appear when you're on other profiles, right? But that will be considering the more advanced stage. So as a start, if you're not intending to work with profiles, I would suggest that you will just uh, use this my tools and you can just drag and drop whatever that you need to use for that day. And not to worry, whatever that you drag and drop will not be cut and pasted, right? Because all the items are still here. No worries, it will not be, it will not disappear whatsoever. And once you finish your work, you can actually just left click on this, press delete, and it's a new day tomorrow, right? So I hope uh, these few tips have uh, helped you out. All right, thank you, have a good day.